Today, I'm gonna to be answering a question I get asked a lot. Am I back to Webflow? Not entirely, and we'll get into that. Last year, I made two videos on why I quit Webflow, which today is my most watched video. I think the reason for this is that people are doing their due diligence when it comes to assessing Webflow and whether it's the right tool for them. In those videos, my highlighted cons were accessibility, SEO, the price, poor customer service and feature development, slight security concerns, unnecessary integrations. If you haven't watched those, then I'll leave links to them in the description below. But you have to understand that came from someone who builds websites for large clients who have very specific needs and who we build interactive and immersive websites. And while I love no code, it helps me out quite a lot. Webflow inevitably just ended up slowing us down, trying to make workarounds for a tool that just wasn't fit for purpose. So I'm just gonna take this moment to ask you if you are enjoying this video, then do hit the like button. And if you wanna hear more about Webflow and kind of what's happening under the hood, please hit subscribe. And with that, let's get on with the rest of the video. So as you've rightly pointed out, and you know who you are, I've begun making Webflow content again. And I've been so overjoyed with the messages that I've received from you guys thanking me for returning to the platform and educating in my way, which some of you seem to enjoy quite a lot. When a client comes to me, we run a mandatory discovery and scoping workshop, and we get into all the technical details and the requirements and the landscape and also the business requirements of the project. We also look into their long-term goal, which subsequently help us decide which technology to go with. And the buzzwords I listen out for when it comes to deciding if Webflow is the right tool is being able to change design, unknown or kind of future branding design or upcoming branding redesigns, and a visual content editor. Now, that last one's a bit of a stretch because there are new tools coming to the table which help us bake in content editable websites such as Vercel's recent announcement with Sanity. So whilst being able to edit kind of in the website itself, it's a nice to have, but I'm also then cognizant of pricing limitations then. Because as I mentioned in my last video, Webflow is expensive. You're paying a lot for what is mostly a designer. So unless design is, a, is the forefront of the requirements, then really it's, it's already not really the tool for me to use. And personally, I'm, I'm torn between design changes. <laughs> now, I don't wanna sound like a dinosaur, but before the likes of Webflow, Oxygen, Elementor, uh, content editing was actually done on the back end through just simple form fields. And while this isn't exactly sexy or interesting, it meant it leaned into this idea of the model view controller. Now the model view controller separates the data, which is the model, from the view, which is how that data is being displayed. Besides, you work really hard crafting a beautiful UX journey or designing something that looks great. Once you give that into the hands of a client who has no idea about design and, and UX fundamentals, they end up bastardizing the design anyway. So I've really got to consider whether it's that we want to allow them to do any design after we've already spent all that time designing for them anyway. So with design updates, a company I'm looking out for really needs to be in the startup phases of their journey. They're still working out their offering, they're pivoting, they're trying to just play around with whatever works and we're giving them a head start on a very simple website that just gets them out there and starts earning the money, which is one of my mottos. So I'd actually be interested in hearing what you have to say about what determines when you decide that someone should use a Webflow website. Let me know down in the comments because I'm genuinely interested. And with that, I'm actually offering that scoping workshop that I spoke about at the beginning. I'm actually offering that as a kind of paid for product for you guys to, to purchase, use, edit, do whatever you kind of want with this serving as a foundation. So what it really entails is basically the, core, the, the framework itself, the, the template itself, but you're also gonna get email templates, you're also gonna get video tutorials on how to run the workshop. I'm still finessing exactly what will go into this product, but 
like I say, if you are interested, let me know at the full stack agency .xyz, and the more people that sign up to it or the more people that are interested, the more incentivized I'm gonna to be to complete this thing. So do let me know if you're interested and uh, I look forward to seeing you in that. So let's finally get into why I decided to come back to Webflow. And well, as I've already said, Webflow always remains just one tool in my tool belt, which to be honest, has only seen the light of day with one large client that I've had. But ultimately it comes down to you guys. The engagement and dedication to learning Webflow specifically encourages me and I still believe there's so much to be taught when it comes to kind of under the hood magic of Webflow. Now, I'm not gonna change your mind on moving away from Webflow. All I can do is present the options. So, but I may as well help you build the best Webflow websites possible that adhere to technical accessibility and SEO standards. So there it is, it's, it's quite simple really. I just wanna help you guys and there's a lot of engagement on those types of videos. So uh, whilst this turned into a bit of a explanatory session on what I listen out for when offering Webflow, which you can use obviously, um, it also just answers that age-old question, am I back to Webflow? And the short answer is no, but I still teach on YouTube.